you have your Bibles, turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. 1 through 4, excuse me. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your reflection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, <clears throat> then shall you also appear with him in glory. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. <clears throat> and I pray, Lord God, that you'll just uh, pour out your blessings upon each individual here and upon this church. But Lord, help us to live in the light of the fact that we do have life eternal. We have life with you. We can live for you, serve you, and be what you'd have us to be. Father, thank you so much for the many wonderful blessings that you poured out upon us. And I pray that in the days, weeks, and months to come, if you permit us to do so, that we'll live for you, serve you, and be the kind of Christians that you'd have us to be. Father, if there's one here this morning who has never truly opened up their hearts and by faith accepted you, uh, I pray that today would be the day that they would do just that. That they invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come into their heart and save their soul. And then they too can have life and have it eternally with the Lord God. For it's in His name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, perhaps in all of Scripture there is no verses greater than the four verses that I've read to you this morning. We are to seek the heavenly. We are to seek that which is in heaven. By the way, in the pagan society, about anything, anything would go. You could bow down before some idol. You could place your offering on the altar and go back to your old sinful ways. Uh, and everything would be all right, or at least you thought so. But the Christian faith brought a whole new concept to the way of life. What we believe has a very definite con uh, connection to how we behave. To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ means being united to Christ. And if we share His life, we should as Christians follow His example. You know, many people claim to be Christians, but they never really truly follow the Lord Jesus Christ as they should. They live their own life in their own way without ever thinking about what the Lord Jesus Christ would have them to do. I want us to look at this passage of Scripture here this morning because it is so very important. Notice in verse 3, he says, We died with Christ. We died with Christ. The fullest example of this wonderful truth, of course, is found <clears throat> in Romans chapter 6 and 8. Christ not only died for us, substitution, he took, our, he took our place upon Calvary's cross, and we died with him. That means we are identified with him. Not only did we die, for he died for our sins, bearing our sins penalty, but he died unto sin, breaking sin's power over us. Romans 6, 2 says, How shall we then, who are dead to sin, live any longer in sin? I want to say to you this morning, if you're a child of God, you're dead to sin. So, why in the world would you want to live in sin when Christ has already paid the penalty for that? Verse 4 says, We live in Christ. Now this is wonderful. John wrote, he, he who has the Son has life. We just studied that this morning in the Sunday school lesson. If you don't have Christ, you don't have eternal life. But if you have the Son, you have life. We're both dead and alive at the same time. 
I don't know where you, you understand that or not. I pray that you do. We're dead to sin and we're alive in Christ. That is so wonderful to me. I don't know about you. Someone has said this. <clears throat> Come on up, brother. You know, a little recipe. Never hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, but this is already made up. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> oh, boy. That's a strong stuff there. <laughs> uh, dead to sin, be alive in Christ. Someone has said life is what you're alive to be. You know, a child will come alive when you talk about baseball or ice cream or something of that nature. <laughs> or a youth when you talk about cars or dates and those things. But you know what the Apostle Paul talked about? He wrote, for me to live is Christ. You know what Paul was saying? He was saying that he was everything related to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was part of one to be part of that. Wherever he went, whatever he did, he always preached Jesus and told people about Jesus. By the way, that's what you and I are to do. When you're out there, I know all of you want to talk politics and all of those things. Well, a certain amount of it's okay, but then lay off of it. But Paul wanted to talk about Jesus. And wherever and when he talked about Jesus, he shared Jesus, he, he preached Jesus. People knew who the Lord Jesus Christ was because Paul was alive in Christ. He wanted people to know about Christ. And it should be that way with every believer. You know, one of the songs that we sing that I really love is, what are you living for? What are you living for if not for Jesus? If you're a child of God, you ought to be living for Jesus. We have this wonderful identi identification with Christ. We, we're to seek the things that are above. You know, <clears throat> We're not to set our minds or attentions on things of this earth. We're to have our minds and set our attention on things of God, not on things of this earth. Now, your feet certainly should be on the earth, but your mind ought to be in heaven. You ought to be thinking about heaven. That's not to say, as Dwight L. Moody used to say quite often, he would say we, we become so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. No, that's not what it means. It means we get our directions from Christ who is in heaven. Whatever it is, you as a child of God, you get your directions from above. You don't get your directions from Washington, D.C. You don't get your directions from somebody else. You get your directions from Christ. That's where Paul got his, and that's where you and I should get ours. It also means that we're to look at earth from heaven's point of view. We look at this old earth and we tend to think of how bad things really are. We think of all the things that are going wrong with our country, all the things that are happening in this world. But let me tell you this, the Lord Jesus Christ is in heaven and he's not thinking about that, he's in control of it. And it's all coming to be what he wants it to be. You know, my position in Christ, listen, is how I stand and walk depends on where I sit. Now, I'm seated in a chair now. <clears throat> and I uh, have to remind you that that hurts too. I'm in a terrible fix. I can't stand up or sit down. But, according to the Word of God, I am seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Isn't that wonderful? I'm not sitting on this old chair. I'm seated with Christ in the heavenlies. I, I don't know about you, but that is so tremendous to me. You know, when the children of Israel came to the border of the promised land, ah, they looked over and they said, boy, those cities are walled. People look like giants. We're not going in. And for 40 years in the wilderness, they just wandered around, you know. All of them except two. Two men in that group, Joshua and Caleb. You know what? They were heavenly minded. They were thinking about the promise that God had given to them. 
that the promised land was to be their home. Listen, my, my thoughts today are on what God has promised to me. He has promised me a home in heaven. He's promised me one day to walk the streets of that heavenly city. Streets that are lined with gold. <laughs> Why am I worried about what's going on here? I'm concerned about what the Lord Jesus Christ thinks of me. You know, why didn't they, why didn't they, did Caleb and Joshua make it? Well, their minds, their hearts was in doing God's will. They knew, they knew that they could go into the land and, and conquer it and take it because God was with them. But the rest of the people didn't believe that. Oh, there's so many people out there. And by the way, my dear friends, a lot of them are Christians. They think we're sinking ship. They think everything's gone wrong. They think everything's bad. Oh, I want to tell you this, my dear friends. God is still in control. Amen. Don't ever get to the point where you think the devil is running things. Don't think that everything in Washington is bad. Don't think all of these things. Think on the heavenly things of what God is doing and what he is going to do. I want to tell you something, dear friends. It, it, this is so tremendous to me. I don't know about you. The believer is seated on the throne with Christ. Can you believe that? You know, if you're saved, if you're saved this morning, you may have trouble getting a hold of this. If you're saved this morning, right now you're seated on the throne with Christ. Yes, you've got to keep your attention, your affection on things of heaven. How do you do that? You do it through the Word of God. You read it. You study it. You do it through prayer, spending time on your knees, going in your closet or bedroom or somewhere and getting down on your knees and praying and talking to God. You do it through worship, coming to worship God on Sunday and other times. And you do it through service. Serving Him. Living for Him. Letting Him direct your path in whatever way it is that He wants you to go. Oh, i tell you something. I watch a young girl there. <clears throat> I have a niece who's uh, in that same program up in Tennessee. And she's going to Brazil. Going to be down there for uh, six months or so. To spread the word. What a joy it is to find these young people who want to talk about Jesus. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, when I was uh, up there at the hospital sitting in the waiting room for a few moments there, I ran into an old gentleman. I made the mistake of asking him how he's doing. And he told me. <laughs> I couldn't hardly get away from him. He wanted me to know every ache, every pain, everything. You know, she. I was thinking to myself, I can tell you a few things, but I, I'm not. I'm gonna try. to try to stay on track here and tell you about Jesus. You know, it, it's 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 so tremendous. That is what we're to do. We're to serve Him, live for Him, pray, worship Him. You know what? You can enjoy your days right here on earth. I don't care how sick you get. I don't care what happens to you. Whatever. If you keep your mind on the heavenly, you can enjoy your time right here on earth. Boy, I, I don't know about you, but I, I see Christians today, you talk to them, and they're so down and so out and so beaten. And what, like there's no hope. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that I go to and talk to. You know what? <clears throat> Your days here on this earth can be heavenly if you want it to be. Just simply, just simply follow Jesus and His precious Word. You know, I, years ago, I heard this story about two sisters. Boy, they were something else. They'd go out, they'd party, they'd have great times, you know. They thought they were having great times. They had these wild parties and all that. But once something happened, 
they run into a young man and he just simply told them about Jesus. And they were converted. They were saved. They found a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some months later, they received an invitation to a party. And they sent this RSVP. In their words, this is what they said. We can't come to your party. We recently died. <laughs> huh? Yes. They died to Christ. <laughs> now I can imagine that group of, you know, joy makers and what have you getting that, saying, Man, they died? We didn't know anything about it. Yeah. They died to Christ. Secondly, we see here, we are raised with Christ. You know, during World War II, the Jewish refugees hid in a cemetery. They had many cemeteries, really. But in one of those cemeteries, a baby was actually born. In one of the graves. The grave had been dug, and the baby and the mother, the baby was born there. When the Lord Jesus Christ give us his life, give us life, he lifted us up out of the grave. He lifted us up out of the miry clay. And he set us on his throne. <laughs> I, I say it again. Listen to me now. Christ is seated on the right hand of God the Father. And we are seated there with him. Now if that doesn't blow your mind, wake up. If you're asleep. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about you, but that just, to me, to think of. That's where I'm at. Seated with Him in the heavenly. Verse 5 says we're hidden with Christ too. Now, we no longer belong to this world. We belong to Christ. The Christian life, by the way, is a, as far as world is concerned, is a hidden life. And our sphere of life is not on earth, but in heaven. And the things that attract and that excite us belong to heaven. I don't know about you, but I love to sing. I'm on my way to Canaan Lane. Amen. You like that? Amen. Huh. How about I, when we all get to heaven? <clears throat> I love you singing. You know why you love those things? Because you're in heaven seated there with Christ. Those are wonderful things that will bring joy to your heart and to your life. <laughs> oh man. I'm not singing I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm singing I'm already there. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that great? Now that doesn't mean uh, don't you go out of here and tell everybody whoa -ho. hey listen <laughs> that doesn't mean you ignore your earthly responsibility. We have earthly responsibility. We don't ignore that. But we are with Christ in glory. The fourth thing he mentions here, he says we are glorified with Christ. Now this is tremendous. One day, one day Christ will return to take his people home. First Thessalonians chapter 4 tells you that. And when he does, we will enter into eternal glory with him. Romans chapter 8 verse 38 says we've already been glorified but the full revelation of that waits the day when the Lord Jesus Christ will return to this earth. Now think about that for a few moments, will you? If you're saved this morning, listen, you died with Christ. You died on Calvary's cross with Christ. And you live in Christ. You've been resurrected with Christ. And you're hidden with Him. <laughs> well, I tell you something. This is just too much for me to, 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 to grasp. And you're hidden with Him. You're glorified with Him. Boy, you may not understand it all. I don't understand it all right now. But one glorious day, one glorious day, I'll understand you. You'll understand. 
There's another song that says, we'll understand it better by and by. I understand some of it now, but one day I'll understand it all better by and by. I'll see my Lord, my Savior, and He'll explain it. I know He will. Oh, praise God. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? That when you die as a child of God, you die with Christ. You're risen with Him. You're resurrected with Him. You're hidden with Him. And you're glorified with Him. <laughs> that is tremendous, isn't it? Well, some of you, I don't know. You may not have made it yet. <laughs> Come on! This is tremendous. This is wonderful. This is great. You talk about verses in Scripture that will get you going. These verses will do just that. You see, that's what it means to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I talked to Sunday school lesson this morning, and the Sunday school lesson was on the promises of God. He promises us eternal life. I asked the question, how do you know that you have eternal life? Got some different... Well, I see the four of them I had in there looking at it. I <laughs> but here it is. You know what? That's a wonderful promise that God's given to us. Amen. And I want to tell you something, dear friends. That promise is here and now. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to wait till something happens. You don't have to wait till some great something or another takes place. It's already happened. It did when you accepted Christ. Invited Him to come into your heart and life. That's, that's what it means. Listen, that's what it means <clears throat> to accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. If you haven't done that, listen to me this morning. If you've never done that, you can do it and do it right now. Just open up your heart. Someone in the class said, well, it's so simple, I don't know why everybody does. You know why everybody doesn't do it? Because you don't want to give up the, this, the throne of your heart. You want to hang on to it. You want to do it your way. You want to do it your way. You don't want to do it Christ's way. That's a problem. Hello. I'd like to go back up there in them mountains and sit in that rocking chair and just rock it all out to the end or whatever. But that's not it. That's my way. That's not Christ's way. He says, Dan, you can rock once in a while, but get up and get with it. <laughs> Do something. That's his way. Here it is. Let me tell you something. Here's how to be saved this morning. I, you know that. You've heard it before, but here it is. <clears throat> First of all, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've got your faith on things of this earth, you're going to go whack. You're going to be out of the com uh, commission. And if you put your faith in the government, I'm telling you, you're really going to be out. <laughs> put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and admit to God that you're a sinner. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. But you know what? There are a lot of people today who he'll tell you right off the track. You know, I never did anything wrong. I never sinned. I'm as good as it comes. Oh, boy, boy. Admit to your sin. Admit to God that you're a sinner. Say, Lord God, I'm a sinner. Ask him to forgive you. And I would say, listen, you asked him to forgive you of all those wrong things that you have done. Now you may say, I haven't done anything wrong, but oh, you'll be telling a story when you do that. <laughs> I would say even go farther than that. You know, confess all those things that you've done, whether it was back when you were young or whatever it might be. You need to get that out. You know, a lot of people today are living in, back in their young days. And you talk to them about Jesus and they'll tell you, well, you know, I've done this when I was 20. Mm. God won't forgive me for that. 
God will forgive you for anything. Amen. And He wants to, but He wants you to come to Him and confess it. Then you, you do those things. Christ will come into your heart and into your life. He'll save you. And I tell you what, you'll have no trouble walking down this aisle. I've had people say to me, listen, I, I would accept Christ, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to walk down the aisle. Do I have to do that? Everybody be watching me. <laughs> yes, they'll be watching you. They'll be praying for you. They want you to come. Don't, don't ever let that stop you. Come down. Be baptized. Go. Oh, my. You want joy. You want happiness and everything. When you do that, now listen to me. When you do that, I want to tell you the very moment you do it, you'll be seated with Christ in glory. You'll die with Him. You'll be raised with Him. Uh -huh. You'll be hidden with Him. And you'll be glorified with Him. You don't have to wait till some other time. It'll take place when you do that. Please don't put it off. Do it today. Christians, I have a word for you too. Most of you probably say to me, uh, Pastor, yes, I agree. Those verses of Scripture are tremendous. And I believe what you said but I have trouble living it. I don't know why you'd have trouble living that kind of life when you have God Almighty, the one who created this universe and created you, telling you that these things are true. Trust Him. Trust Him. Don't trust. Uh, don't trust your preacher. Mm. <coughs> Yeah, what well, you can trust me again. Don't, don't what, you understand what I'm saying, don't you? Don't put your trust in anything except the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one. Let us pray. Almighty God, these verses of Scripture speak to this boy's heart this morning. And I thank you, Lord God, for the for, for helping me to proclaim it. I realize, Lord, that there are few, very few Joshua or Caleb's around. But there are those who have committed themselves and dedicated themselves to doing exactly what you'd have them do. And you've blessed them. And I pray for those who, these young people who have given their hearts and lives to the mission for you. I pray, Lord God, for our church here this morning. I pray for each individual here. Pray that each one of us understand what it is to be saved. Now, someone said to me, yes, we're all going to have eternal life. But I want to tell you this. According to the word, your word, God, those who have never accepted your son will spend an eternal life in a place called hell. It doesn't have anything to do with whether you've been baptized, what church you belong to, or any of those things. It has to do with whether or not you have, by faith, accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And I pray, Lord God, that no one would leave this sanctuary this morning without making absolutely sure that they're seated with you in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.